both Cursor and Windsurf this past week has released their major updates to their IDE where Cursor announced Cursor 2.0 along with Composer 1, which is their own model. And Windsurf released SWE 1.5, which is also their own model. And you can start to see both IDEs are starting to prioritize different fields where on Cursor, they did integrate several cool features, including a browser integration to their IDE where the agents now have access to the browser. And on Windsurf, they did they shifted the focus a little bit towards more towards tools for engineers like hardcore engineers where they actually release code maps and also deep wiki which as you know are products from cognition because they are already i think they are currently in the process of being acquired by cognition so those tools i think are like one of the best tools uh, out there for code base analysis and code base indexing and in this video we are going to compare them side by side by just you know trying out like i usually do by building a full stack app, which is a real world test. And we'll see how each model compares. And also in the meanwhile, I will be trying out their respective tools. Before we start, I do want to compare a little bit about the pricing and the usage. Windsurf is a little bit cheaper here. It's starting off at $15 a month and Cursor starts at $20 a month and both provides a pay as you go plan. And also they have upgrades to the Pro Plus and an enterprise level. Uh, plan so as you can see this is windsurf's plan so it's also free and reserve the pro one which is i'm currently using uh, you get 500 props credits per month as for cursor they also come in around four plans the first one is the free plan and the second one is the pro plan which is the one i'm currently on uh, i would say on this pricing page it is uh, a bit vague uh, <laughs> the explanation about the usage itself so i'm going to actually show you guys the docs for cursor uh, the actual usage is based on the pricing of the actual models that you use uh, when you are coding. So for example, for Composer 1, uh, it is costing, uh, sorry, if, yeah, so for Composer 1, it is costing like the input and output is, is detailed here. And yeah, the more expensive the model used, um, of course, the faster you are going to uh, take up your usage depending on um, how much you use per day and how much you code per day. Uh, me personally, uh, you can see here, this is my current usage. So I've only been using it ever since the Cursor 2.0 launch, which is, which is about like last week, uh, almost last week, um, which is about last week. So it's about, this is about a week um, and a couple of days worth of usage. And you can see it has, I've already exceeded my pro plan actually. So I've actually, the $20 that I was given, as you can see here, I started using it on the um, 30th of October, which is about yeah, eight, eight to nine days ago. I've already built $4 for my on-demand usage, which is kind of insane. Uh, yeah, like if you are going with Cursor, don't go with the pro plan. I, I mean, if you are like me at least, because I code maybe six to 10 hours a day. And yeah, that's what you can get. And also for the usage here are uh, the usage I've, um, yeah, this is my overall usage uh, for the past week. And you can see, uh, Composer 1 was actually given to me for free. Uh, I got an email from Cursor and then they gave me for, gave, gave me it for free for like two days. So you can see here the bills are like $0. But before that, it costed me uh, quite a bit uh, per request. So these are all per request. You can see all the tokens used and everything. And of course, if you are using like a more expensive model, you are going to reach that limit really, really quick. Yeah, just to give you an example, this is the difference between 4.5 Sonnet and also Composer 1. So yeah, that's with Cursor and with Windsurf. Uh, it is more like easy to calculate at least because they do have like a credit system where if you see the docs, um, the models itself, uh, they each have their own assigned credit points for the usage. So one request for SWE, for example, the 1.5 uh, version would have costed me one credit per request, uh, which makes more sense. And yeah, there's a bit of a bug here, but yeah, let's just ignore that. <laughs> and you can see my usage for Windsurf. This is just today. Yesterday, I just coded a little bit and I have already taken up 24 of my credits for this month and you can just calculate uh, how much you would use per day and you just see if you would want to use this pro plan or if you want to need an upgrade uh, but yeah for me personally i will never <laughs> i don't think i'll reach this limit in like a month i'll probably reach it in probably like a week like i did with cursor so yeah um pro plans are just not more for me that's why i will always prefer uh pod code uh billing and also codex and also gl encoding plan of course over these uh usage-based billings Right, back to the main topic of this video. I will be uh, testing out these two IDE side by side by building a real world full stack app. And for the test, I've actually already done the planning to build the app and I used Codespace for this. You can try it out in the link in the description for free. Uh, what I did was just, I just made a task and a whole new project where it is an AI account uh, dashboard and assistant where it will essentially be just an AI assistant where we can chat with this AI and then we'll be able to track 
uh, either our income or our expenses just by chatting with the AI and then it'll automatically do tool calls and insert and update the database uh, according to what we prompted. So uh, here's the summary of, sorry, here's the text pack that has already been generated uh, based on my original prompt, which is this one. And I've already, down, I've already downloaded this and also the docs that you'll see here. All of these I've already downloaded to my workspaces in my local machine. So if I open up cursor, um, this, these are the docs that I've added. And also here is the text pack. And for Windsurf, I literally just copied the whole uh, directory and we have the exact same uh, files. And if you are wondering why do I already have files here, because I am using a starter kit from Code Guide. It is the free uh, starter kit that comes with um, Code Guide, which is the Code Guide starter full stack. You can visit it in the link in the description. You can easily just create a template and start a new project based on that. Because we already have a text pack and a full on documentation library here. I'm not going to add too much to the prompt and this is just going to be a very straightforward prompt and I'm just referring to the text pack and also the docs to start off building this app and I've also done it on Windsurf. So let's just start. As you can see, it's here. It's the same exact prompt. I'm just going to enter the prompt to start off the build. So let's just press send here and also on cursor, I will yep, just press send. As you can see, I am using Composer 1 uh, for the model and for Windsurf, I am using SWE 1.5. And let's just wait until it's finished and I'll test it out. Both Composer 1 and SWE 1.5 finished building up the project. And you can see here, I open it up on the browser tab on Cursor. And for Windsurf, you can see it is finished, but I did open it on Chrome, uh, as you can see here. And I've already logged in on both. So the signups work uh, fine and I was able to log in. You can see here. And so I do want to show you guys the one on Cursor first. So what I like to do, and I'd like to also showcase the new feature on Cursor is that they actually have a different view now where you can change it out to the agent's view here on the top left. And I think this is like a really good view if you prefer like a sort of like chat GPT, bolt.new or like V0 sort of like interface where you do have the chat on the left. And then you can see the whole like artifact or like the whole actual like browser um, you can browse through in on the right side. and. I I can actually hide the file tree here on the right by clicking this so you can get a better view of the you know browser and yep i do think like this is pretty sick for you especially like the, your if you're like a vibe coder and you're not you're gonna like see the actual like code you can definitely I, I can definitely see you guys like opting out for this view instead and of course if you because the chat is connected to the browser you also have this uh, select element where you can actually refer to whatever element you want to change and then it will automatically be mentioned in the chat which is such a good feature now let's just test out the app and what I just do uh, is I should just go to the chat and test that out. So the chat should be on the main screen. So yeah, it is on the homepage um, uh, and you can see here it does have a pretty interesting layout. Um, it's not my preferred layout, but yeah, let's just compare it first with Windsurf. So this is the one on Windsurf. I do prefer Windsurf one better because it is more, uh, I, I would say it's, it's just more simple and I do prefer that. And you do get some of these recommendations and on here. Uh, you do get a greetings on the first uh, message and there are yeah on the side they do have like the also the same like recommended prompts so let me just try out a few prompts and see if there are any issues good news for cursor i guess uh i just did one prompt and he was able to straight away insert whatever i wrote to the database uh from the ai via tool call but yeah of course i'm not quite sure if it did like it said anything it could be just hallucination so i will check that in the dashboard uh one sec but in one sec, but let's just see how Windsurf has done. So it did also just log it straight away, which is nice. So let's just both test it out on the dashboard. So let me just go to dashboard. You can just click, click this button. It will go to the dashboard. Okay, so it is actually already done. Wow, that's such a smooth uh, build of like, that's such a smooth experience from both of them. Um, so let me see if actually Windsurf built up the dashboard first. So, okay, so it is asking me to log in, even though I am already logged in, as you can see here, uh, I am logged in. So there is a bug here on Windsurf, but on Cursor, wow, it is actually finished, like fully working. And you can see it is submitted to the database because when I, you know, refresh and everything, it is still there. And the UI looks really good because this is actually using the default UI from StartKit itself. Like you can see here the cards and the, the values inside of them, like they are using the exact same styling, which is fine. Um, that's what I like. And also the chart here, you can't really see, but I will, Add some more dominated so you guys can see how it looks like in the meanwhile i will be testing at windsurf uh, sorry i will be uh prompting some more on windsurf because there is this error on the dashboard that i'm not able to access i also want to showcase the new features on windsurf where there is now these two buttons here on the left which is the first one is code maps which is this is like i would say this is one of the best if not the best feature out of any ai tools where it is actually able to explain to us in like a really good format it, it is 
pretty much just a pseudocode of whatever um, you know code or like piece of method or function we ask it to you know to generate or like to generate the code map of. Uh, but it is like really good. It's really handy because I do always have to explain everything from scratch on like specific functions or methods every time I want to build out a new feature based on an existing feature. So this is like a very good addition. You can see here the formatting and everything is just really good for me at least to understand as a dev. And also we can just uh, copy and paste this or even just pass it on to the chat on the right here so we can continue on iterating this function or like this sort of feature we have selected. And you can also see here there's some, um, it's very comprehensive, like it explains everything about like, as you can see, I just did like a simple query about the chat itself and he was able to explain it um, in and out. And and it's very easy to, to understand in from a developer point of view. And also on DeepWiki, if you go hover and like do if you hold command or control and shift and actually select like one of the um if you select one of the method or, or even anything just anything you can you can press it pretty much and it'll automatically generate like a whole documentation and it's super quick uh and i'm just amazed by this feature because i will be using this quite a lot to pass it on to different uh you know like different ai models and yeah just because i do tend to use like different models and different tools for uh, building out a project or like a set of features and this is going to be really handy because I can just copy paste this whole markdown or even just you know explore the actual app itself to get a better understanding to to plan out my future features so yeah that's um how windsurf that's those are the two newest features on windsurf and I will be prompting out to fix that issue on the dashboard so let me just do that okay so the problem with windsurf's version of the app is fixed now and you can see it is looking really similar in terms of the layout and the UI you can see here because it is using the starter kit uh, existing components, which is fine because that's what I wanted and that's what I prefer. And it, it does look nice. And if we compare with cursors one, there are more colors on the one in Windsurf. And yeah, but there is just a bit of difference here on the table where it is a bit translucent or transparent. Whereas the one on cursor does look uh, worse because the padding issue here, but it is more consistent. So yeah, those are the main differences. And that's, yeah, that's it pretty much. <laughs> it is working fine. and. They both are uh, pretty much just worked off the bat. There's a bit of issues on um, yeah on um, Windsurf side where it did not uh, let me actually enter the dashboard, but that's like very minor and it was very easy to fix. What I think of Crosser and Windsurf and which one should you choose for your project? Well, in my opinion, both are kind of already like setting a new priority. Like for Crosser, you can see that they have just added like a whole bunch of features that would be very useful for like bike coders, especially with that agent view. Whereas Windsurf is actually doing kind of the opposite where they are implementing features that appeal more to like hardcore engineers that would probably not be vibe coding. And, but we'll kind of still use the, you know, like uh, a few prompts here and there to fix up the uh, code, but they do have way better tools for understanding the code itself, especially for larger code bases. So yeah, those are like their priorities now, which is what I really like about Windsurf or whereas Cursor. It does have a way better UX in my opinion, especially with that agent view. But yeah, and also the browser is like such a good feature because you can even do like full agent mode on the browser and just you know ask the agent to do anything on the browser, which is of course uh, will have a lot of use cases for a lot of people. Um, just on top of my head, you can also like do like scraping and things like that. That's really like powerful. As for my own experience using both of them, um, I do think that the usage is like very low compared to the CLI tools that's already out. Like for example, like Claude Code and Codex provide pretty much unlimited usage. They just have like rate limits, uh, like five hour rate limits and like weekly rate limits, which is fine. Uh, and you can switch on, you can switch to like other models when you reach the limit, but overall like they, they do provide like a unlimited an unlimited usage uh, plan for like each of the monthly plans, which is a lot better in my opinion than Cursor's and Windsurf's um, schema for the plan or a discipline plan where you essentially only get like a limited amount every month, which is not good. And you have that pay as you go plan, uh, which I am not a fan of <laughs> because it, it does get quite expensive if you just go ham with like all the AI features and like, especially just prompt, like if you, when you try like prompt your way out of a bug or something. So yeah, those are the considerations you need to, you know, think about before you subscribe to these. And if you want to also compare with and, and also, if you want to compare with other CLI tools, I have made a video or like several videos actually on my channel you can check out. 
And yeah, that's that's my final verdict. And I, if you want to know what I'm currently using, I am using Windsurf and uh, Cloud Code with GLM coding plan because I do really like the code maps and the deep wiki feature feature on Windsurf. But the usage itself for the AI code side of things uh, using SWE and other models, it is not that great of experience and also the usage is not much and especially so i am getting this bug on on windsurf where when i chat uh with like a very large complex task it does tend to like stop midway for some reason with the swe 1.5 model i don't know if you guys are also experiencing that but yeah that's just like a very like annoying bug um that i've been experiencing on my short time trying out windsurf so yeah that's it for this video if you guys have any feedback or have any questions just leave them in the comments below we do have a discord channel if you want to discuss more to about uh, AI coding tools with us. And if you would like to try Postbase, there's a free trial in the link in the description below. That's it. Thank you.